Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, President Biden still recovering from COVID. He's not the only one. Sarah Costa has the latest on a top Texas leader who's also dealing with the virus. Plus, parents of victims in Uvalde want answers on the future and about school police chief Pete Edadondo. We're going to take a look when they could get those answers next. Outside with live cam, raise your hand if you hid from the heat all weekend long. We have a, an update on how the work week is looking coming up with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, July 25th. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Uh, it was nice, but you know, I have to admit I stayed indoors. I did too. I left the house a total of two times, Mike Osterhage, and one of those times was necessary. Had to eat at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going to the grocery store is always tough walking yeah. across the parking lot. Went to the pool yesterday and actually wasn't that bad. There were, you know, a couple of clouds here and there, but we had enough sunshine obviously to get up to uh, 101 yesterday. So the uh, <laughs> the number continues, the street continues. And right there, there's the clouds going kind of in and out. There's that little sliver of a moon which has just risen. Very cool. We'll have some of our morning clouds hanging around here, obviously. And uh, temperatures this morning. Yep, it is definitely warm out there. 79, 76 Port SA, a couple of 78 Stinson and Pleasanton 79 also at Casterville and Canyon Lake. And once again, there's a ton of humidity. Dew points low to mid 70s. So uh, get ready to be greeted by that. And a heat index of 83 right now uh, up the road at Canyon Lake. Molds on the low side from yesterday's count. Of course, the updated reading will come out later on this morning. 92 at noon, 102. High temperature. We continue to chalk up. This will be day number 46. And then we continue to add to this throughout the rest of the week. Little tiny chance of rain down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. Top story this morning, Uvalde School Board is meeting tonight after canceling a special meeting Saturday to discuss the firing of School District Police Chief Pete Adadondo. So far, the potential firing is not on the agenda, but people say they want their voices heard over inaction from the school board. We will have a crew at tonight's meeting. Look for the latest in our later newscast and online at ksat.com. In less than a week after a Texas House committee released an exhaustive report investigating the May 24th school shooting in Uvalde, state officials published a copy in Spanish. Now, officials faced some backlash for not originally publishing the 77-page report both in English and in Spanish. And now turning to the coronavirus, the latest numbers here in Bear County. Sarah Costa joins us now with the details. Good morning, Sarah. Of positive cases in Bear County has decreased slightly, but remains in the high category. Metro Health is reporting over 1,000 new cases as of Friday, zero new deaths to report. Meanwhile, 327 people across the county are hospitalized with COVID. 51 are in the ICU, 17 are on ventilators. Now, these numbers will be updated today at 4.30 p.m. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick will be working from home this week. This comes after announcing he tested positive for COVID. According to his office, Patrick is experiencing mild symptoms. He is also isolating at his home and following all protocols. Patrick is fully vaccinated and got his booster shot last fall. This isn't his first bout with COVID. Patrick previously tested positive about eight months ago. His office says he will work from home the rest of the week. And from the White House, President Joe Biden's condition is improving as he battles COVID-19. Yesterday, his physician, Dr. Kevin O'Connor, says the president's main symptom right now is a sore throat. He called the development, quote, encouraging, saying it's an indication that Biden's body is clearing the virus. Now, the president is being treated with Paxlovid. He will remain in isolation until he tests negative for COVID-19. We'll continue to follow this story. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. After the CDC confirmed two cases of monkeypox in children this weekend, the number of cases in the U.S. approaching now 3,000. So far, the state with the most cases is New York with 900. That is followed by California with 356. Texas has over 100 cases statewide with a handful in San Antonio. To your morning headlines, many cities across the U.S. are still seeing record-breaking temperatures. Over in California, the Oak Fire has burned at least 10 structures and is forcing evacuations. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the latest. This morning, as extreme heat grips the east, just trying to stay in the shade, wildfires sending residents fleeing in the west. Emergency crews in Yosemite National Park working day and night 
from the ground and in the air, trying to contain the more than 15,000 acre oak fire. Dead trees and scorching temps fueling the flames in the drought ravaged state. It really is a challenge because of the amount of heat that's in those fuels. It makes it challenging for our firefighters to fight these fires. Thousands in Mariposa County have already evacuated, uncertain if their homes will be standing there when they return. Our Alex Brochet is there. This is the new reality for so many residents that live here. Charred remains of a once normal life. Patio furniture, cups, toys, all destroyed. Meanwhile, back on the East Coast, a sweltering heat wave. Scorching temperatures are expected to last all week in the New York tri-state area. Meteorologists say it could be the longest heat wave in nearly a decade. Too hot, <laughs> too hot. <laughs> Extremely too hot. In Boston, Sunday, temperatures hitting a record 100 degrees, surpassing a daily record set back in 1933. Officials in New York City cut the distance of its annual triathlon in half as a safety precaution. The city opening more than 500 cooling centers to help residents without air conditioning. And in Philadelphia, misting stations were set up outside the Phillies ballpark to help cool the masses. There are more deaths from heat every year in the U.S. than any other weather disaster. And now 90 million Americans from Texas to Maine are sweltering in dangerously hot weather. Experts blaming the record-breaking heat on climate change. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Up in Canada, Pope Francis on a week-long visit to the Great White North. It's the first papal visit there in 20 years. On Sunday, he spent time in Edmonton where he apologized to indigenous peoples for church abuses committed in schools. The move was seen as an act of healing. Future stops include mass in Edmonton and in Quebec. Time now, 436 and 78 degrees for now. Coming up in just minutes, the mission celebrating things all from a galaxy far, far away. We'll tell you when they're hosting Star Wars night. And after the break, San Antonio is getting another pro football team. So when would the season start? The answer after the break. That is exciting news this morning for sure for all of us San Antonio football fans. Right now looking live at 90 at Medio Creek. There are a few cars out there. There's 281 at Jones Maltzberger. And taking a look outside with live cam, 78 degrees for now and a little humid out there. Good morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back 440 this morning. Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Movie star and former WWE superstar Dwayne The Rock Johnson is bringing pro football back to San Antonio with the newly formed XFL. Johnson purchased the league from WWE's former chairman Vince McMahon. The Rock says he wanted to add markets like San Antonio to the mix. The head coach here will be former Steelers wide receiver and Super Bowl champ Heinz Ward. This is the Alamo City's first pro football team since the Commanders went 5-3 in 2019 before the Alliance of American Football went bankrupt. And I can tell you in, in the time leading up to the announcement, there's a lot of excitement, not only from uh, San Antonio in terms of uh, having professional football back in our city, uh, but also from the league. The league recognizes, as I do, as I think the whole sports kingdom does, that San Antonio is primed and ready to step up and increase its profile of professional athletics. And and this is another example and a small step again, uh, a significant step, but one step indeed towards uh, us having a larger share of the professional sports world. All right, so we haven't heard a team name yet here. XFL plans to kick off February 18th next year, less than a week after the NFL Super Bowl. Other cities in the league, Texas, well represented teams here, uh, Houston and Arlington. There are also teams in St. Louis, Seattle, D.C., Las Vegas and Orlando. Well, looking ahead on Saturday, August 27th, the Missions will host Star Wars Night. There will be post-game fireworks and a lightsaber battle. That's right. Players will also wear special Mandalorian-themed jerseys, which, of course, include Grogu, a.k.a. Baby Yoda. The jerseys will be auctioned off after the game with proceeds benefiting the Alzheimer's Association. Now, there will also be multiple Star Wars characters around Wolf Stadium, so fans are encouraged to wear their Star Wars gear for the game against the Midland Rockhounds. August 27th. Yeah. Looking forward to it. It's really cute. <laughs> 442, 78 degrees. Looking ahead, Hollywood unleashed a heroic number of announcements and trailers. At San Diego Comic-Con, we're going to take a look at the biggest ones coming up. And back to school shopping, getting started. So how can you keep inflation from crushing your budget? We'll look into it next. And 
welcome back. It's 445 with the weather out there. It doesn't feel like it, but it's almost back to school time. And with inflation, that could mean spending a lot more on what the kids need before heading back to class. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis reports on this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, with prices soaring, back to school shopping has parents everywhere stressed. Everything seems to be going up. With three boys ages 10, 12, and 14, Lindsay says shopping for back to school is especially tough. Well, thank goodness I still have an elementary schooler because he gets one list, but the middle schooler and the high schooler have a list for each individual class. Our latest survey shows that families plan to spend over $860 on average, and many of them have noticed higher prices. But the good news for parents like Lindsay is that Florida is one of the 17 states around the country that have tax-free holidays for school supplies starting today or in upcoming weeks. And coming up at 7 a.m., more tips for saving. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Well, for you early bird commuters, and those are most of them leaving before, say, 5 or 5.30, here's the way things are looking right now on the highways and byways of San Antonio. 90 at Couples, 90 at Nogalitos. Yes, there are some folks getting a jump start on the day or maybe heading home from their overnight shifts. Very good. And I know yesterday, Mike, you were talking about how 101 didn't feel so bad. It's yeah, it, it was kind of comfortable in the afternoon. We had a few clouds, you know, here and there, um, but enough or not enough, I should say, to not to prevent us from getting up to, to 101. So it was, yes, another day, day number 40 five yesterday and we're going to continue to rack them up throughout the the rest of this week. Yeah, one or two of those clouds every once in a while is kind of pleasant. By the way, a lot of folks uh, last night were talking about some space junk, saw something off in the eastern sky and Saracosta is going to be talking a little bit more about that. But uh, and also there's an article on our website that uh, Sarah Spivey wrote last night. It was just a piece of space junk that a lot of folks saw. But I'm going to show you a couple of pictures coming up here a little bit later on. There is the little sliver of a moon so we've got some clouds but they are breaking up at times and then it tries to just sort of disappear out there so we'll keep some of our morning clouds around here yes yesterday most everybody with a couple of exceptions out there in the hill country did hit triple digits again hot spot being Catula at 107 106 in Laredo and roughly the same thing today about the same situation within a degree or two here or there and that's going to be the case all around the metropolitan area we're looking at uh, 102s from right around downtown over toward Lackland, Casterville, and then the uh, upper 90s up to the north. So this morning we keep a few clouds around here. Temperatures will stay in the um, upper 70s in most areas. And then those clouds, which will again stick around throughout the morning hours and then start to clear on out and we'll already make it up to 90 at 11, 92 at noon. And yep, we'll do it again. 102 high temperature later on today. And as far as the humidity, it's not going to be too awfully high in the afternoon. So at least even though it's really high right now, at least it will continue to drop down that usual cycle that we go through in every 24 hours. And the last week, sometimes the humidity was sticking around a little too much in the afternoon, and that's why we were getting those had those heat advisories and excessive heat warnings last week. So at least the humidity is dropping down as far as uh, the afternoon hours. Now going into the future today, nothing going on around here tomorrow about the same situation. Wednesday. Now, again, take into account that this computer model does tend to do things with a broad brush, you know, so it doesn't mean there's going to be everything around here, but there is going to be the chance for a couple of showers here along the coastal plain, and that's going to be the situation on into Thursday as well. Question being, if anything pops up, does it try and scoot a little bit further inland? That's a wait and see type situation. So this is about the only thing as of right now, even perhaps into Friday. Most of that would be confined further off there to the east, but at least we would get some of these waves. We've been talking for the past couple of days about these small little waves trying to move on in here from the, the Gulf of Mexico. So that again is what the hope is by the middle part of the week. So here's the high, which is centered just about right over the, the northeast of us, and it's still dominating the southern half southern two thirds of the country, but we get these little disturbances here. We call them easterly waves, and that would give us that chance for as this little wave tries to move on in here. The high is just far enough up to the north that chance for a couple of uh, showers coming in here as we go on into, like I said, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe 
further off to the east by Friday. Get, this is just wishful thinking again at best because we're talking a 10% chance and that would be about it. 92 degrees today, partly cloudy skies at noon and then high temperature makes it up to 102. And over the next few days, we are just going to keep counting them. So today is going to be day number 46. And um, unless something dramatic changes, we're looking at day number 50 by Friday. Sarah Costa yesterday asked me, I was doing the weather and said, are we going to break the 59? Oh, wow. Which is the record set uh -huh, back in uh -huh. 2009. I think at the, at the rate we're going, um, Highly likely. It's not looking good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or it is looking well, good. Well, looking good to break looking the record. Looking good to break it. So. <laughs> right. And then the question being, since we've had so much heat around here, is it just, hey, let's go for it? <laughs> Might as well. Go for the record? record? Yeah. <laughs> not something we're striving for. That's for sure. Uh, but I will say this. I, I noticed on social media all weekend long, people are starting to get extra creative with ways to stay, to cool. stay cool activities mm -hmm. indoors or yeah. or vacations where they're kind of timing it where they can be out, the, you know, out of the out from being outside in the heat of the day, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, we're having to get a lot, you know, creative at this time of year. Well, and the thing too, the problem that's it's starting going to start to crop up is when then football practice starts, band, oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. all those summer they're, activities outside. They're going to have to take yeah. different measures as well. Extra breaks, more water, early in the water, day. Water. I mean, they know what we're, they're doing. And, it's yeah. just it just has seemed to start earlier and been more intense this year. Yeah, it has. I mean, uh, we're way ahead of of schedule compared to those those past couple of years, because so, most of those days came in the month of August. Yes, sir. Okay, Mike, thank you. 451 on your Monday morning, about 78 degrees. And coming up after the break, the next wave of movies and shows on the horizon. What Hollywood is saying about it, still ahead. And take a look at all your lottery numbers. And uh, don't forget, Mega is Mega this week. It's like 790. Yeah. Yeah, so here's pick three numbers, 810, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 6555, five, Fireball 4. I need to buy Mega tonight. <laughs> okay, I'll send you a reminder. Okay. You didn't <laughs> buy it when it was only 200 Right, I, need, I want it to be a little higher. Okay, yeah. we're there now. Cash 5, 5, 7, 12, 25, 28, Lotto, Texas, 6, 7, 14, 20, 26, 31. And your Powerball numbers, 39, 41, 54, 59, 62, Powerball 12, Power Play 3. Good luck to Mark buying his tickets for Mega tonight. About 5 till 5 in this morning's Spotlight. Who needs to go to San Diego Comic Con when we can bring you a look at some of the biggest news from the event? Rick Damagella has a breakdown in today's Hollywood Minute. This is a multi-year journey you're about to embark on. Bruce Banner isn't kidding. Hollywood unleashed previews of movies and streaming projects spanning the next several years at San Diego Comic-Con over the weekend. Disney and Marvel Studios announced details and first looks at several upcoming projects, including She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and I Am Groot. Born out of rage. Warner Brothers debuted new footage from Black Adam starring Dwayne Johnson and Pierce Brosnan, along with a first look at its follow-up film, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Your waking world is shaped by dreams. Netflix revealed more of its upcoming series from the darker side of the comic book world, The Sandman, streaming August 5th. Have you given any thought to where this ends? This story ends with our first look at Keanu Reeves in John Wick 4, arriving in theaters next March. Geeking out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, so there is a fourth one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, get ready. <laughs> yeah. 456, about 78 degrees. And still to come at five, murals are going up around downtown Uvalde to honor the victims of the Robb Elementary shooting. What one artist is saying about her project next. As Mike touched on briefly in this newscast, a lot of people saw something crazy in the sky overnight that burned right through the atmosphere. What was it? We won't tell you what we've learned so far. A new survey finds families are prioritizing back to school and college spending as inflation continues to rise. Ahead on GMSA at 6, a look at some cost saving tips for you and your family. We are hoping for an accident free morning commute. Right now, there's 281 at Jones Mulsberger. We'll talk to Mike about traffic coming up after this break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Did you see it this morning on GMSA? A streak of light left the trail across the sky last night just before 1030. Why some people could have heard a boom still ahead.
Plus, two months after the tragedy in Uvalde, murals are being painted to honor the 21 victims. We're going to hear from one artist coming up. Outside with a live cam right now, the street continues as far as 100 degree plus days. Do we continue into this week? We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, July 25th. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend avoiding the heat, right? That's what most of us are trying to do out there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mass survival technique, Mike <laughs> Osterhage, for this time of year. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yeah, and the, the, are you getting tired of it yet? I guess that's the, the big question. Everybody, they're both, yes, everything, everybody's shaking their heads. And um, unfortunately, there is just no relief in sight. We are going to be up there again today 79 degrees plenty of humidity that bottom number the dew point came back up it was down lower yesterday afternoon so it was not as just miserable in the afternoon that's going to be the case today at least we are seeing a, more of a drop with the uh, humidities later on in the day so that 102 won't really feel much higher than that also we had a couple of those clouds which helped out at times yesterday the aquifer uh, did go up three tenths of a foot also went up on Saturday of course still got watering restrictions restrictions check with your local municipality as far as what the restrictions are in your neighborhood and mold is on the low side the update account is going to come out in just a couple of hours so of course yep we got some heat index to deal with it actually feels like 82 when you put the humidity into the mix 83 canyon lake and 82 also at castorville but like i said the heat index later on this afternoon won't just be outrageously high so warm and humid got some clouds hanging around here this morning and then later on this afternoon same old song and dance and then we'll do another verse of it tomorrow more triple digit temperatures and few uh, coastal showers are possible by midweek. One or two of them, whether they kind of sneak it a little bit further inland, that sort of a wait and see type situation. But uh, we are definitely on track to hit day number 50 with the triple digit temperatures by Friday. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, let's take a look around town right now. And as you can see on Trans Guy, there is nothing out there. That looks to be a 281 over there by uh, Hildebrand and then a couple of other spots around town. We've got uh, pretty good traffic. We're going to keep checking on it throughout the rest of the morning. Mike, thank you very much. Now to some late breaking news just to our newsroom. Someone has crossed the line from collector to criminal. San Antonio police say four people broke into a shop that sells collectible sports cards and stole bags full of merchandise. Trina Weber is live at the scene on that investigation in Lock Hill, Selma near Northwest Military Drive. And Katrina, do police have any idea how much money was stolen? Actually, it was merchandise, not money. Stephanie, uh, good morning. We are in the process of trying to find that out. I was able to speak to the owner just a couple of seconds ago. And he says he's still taking inventory to get the total amount of items that were stolen. But you can see what happened here behind me. Uh, the door on Sports Cards Plus broken. The glass just smashed. Police told us that this happened right after 4 o'clock this morning. Someone came along with something, possibly a rock, they tell me broke the window, got inside very quickly, four people dressed all in black, and then they grabbed items from the shelves inside the store, stuffed them into trash bags, made their way out to a U-Haul truck that was waiting and sped away. Uh, and again, you could see people inside sweeping up that broken glass. Police are inside as well, uh, taking evidence, fingerprints if they can find any. And uh, also they've been talking to the owner as well as other people inside there to try to figure out exactly what is missing. But that's the big question here, and that will come after time. Uh, the owner did tell us he has surveillance video and will be able to look at that to try to determine everything that was taken here this morning. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. This morning, it's been two months since the tragedy, Uvalde at Robb Elementary School. Across downtown Uvalde, murals are being painted to honor the 21 victims killed in that shooting. It is part of a project called Healing Uvalde 21 Portrait Murals. Artists from across Texas have been paired with a victim based around a connection they share. Ada Hernandez is painting Maite Rodriguez, a 10-year-old who's known by her green Converse shoes. Maite's mom shared her daughter was identified by her shoes after being killed killed in her classroom. As Hernandez worked on the mural of Maite, she was able to see special moments between loved ones of other victims and the murals that had been completed. We came early yesterday and there was one of the, one of the teacher's best friends was having coffee in front of the mural. 
The murals will be finished in the next couple of weeks and a dedication ceremony is in the works for August. There will also be a map made so people can easily find where each of the murals will be located. And this morning we have new details on an Amber Alert issued to phones overnight across the state. The Lampasas County Sheriff's Office is searching for three abducted children. Authorities are looking for three-year-old Kristen Robertson, four-year-old Christine Robertson, and six-year-old Christopher Robertson. The second. Now they're also looking for 35 year old Amber Whitehead. She is described as five foot seven, weighing 165 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Authorities say she is driving a white 2007 Toyota Tundra with Texas license plate number GJZ8544. So you're asked to contact the Lampasas County Sheriff's Office or call 911 if you see these kids or the suspect. Two people were killed and at least five others injured after gunfire erupted on Sunday at a Los Angeles park where a car show was being held. So the Los Angeles Police Department says it happened at Peck Park in LA's San Pedro neighborhood. So far, police have not identified the victims. Seven people overall, four men and three women, were injured and taken to hospitals. Police have not offered a motive and no arrests have been made. Top of your morning headlines, a fast moving wildfire continues to gain momentum in California, now burning more than 44,000 acres. It's estimated the fire is at 0% contained. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency for Mariposa County, allowing the state to put in additional resources there. More than 3,000 people have been forced to evacuate their homes near Yosemite National Park. Firefighters are battling to save Yosemite's giant sequoia trees, along with 2,000 buildings threatened by the blaze. The U.S. is working with Ukraine on a plan B to get grain exports out of the country after Russia's attack on the port of Odessa this weekend. The plan will involve transport by road, rail, river and other means to move exports more quickly. Experts believe getting grain out of the country could help avoid a global food crisis. Well, did you see the sky light up over South Texas and San Antonio last night? Did you see it? No, we were asleep. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> it's our most trending story on KSET.com this morning. It looked like a meteor strike, that's what we're told, across the Alamo City just after 10 p.m. Sarah Costa joins us live. And Sarah, was the beam of light, what was it that flew over the city? Okay, well, I'm no expert, but our meteorologist Sarah Spivey believes it was not a meteor but space debris, but it was definitely a sight to see. So go ahead and just take a look. Shortly after 10 p.m., folks around South Central Texas began to notice a boom and a large streak of light leaving a trail across the night sky. You can see it right there, fizzling off with a sparkling finish. Now, this is an educated guess by our meteorologist, but the light show was most likely space junk falling into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, space debris or junk is the collection of man-made objects that exist in a low Earth orbit. This consists of discontinued satellites, discarded rocket stages, and other objects that collided and broke off into space. Now, according to NOAA, 200 to 400 pieces of space junk fall back into Earth's atmosphere each year. That's nearly one per day on average. So meteorites, meteorites travel millions of miles before they actually get to Earth, gaining tremendous speed. So unless a meteor is unusually very large, it will move quickly across the sky and it usually disappears before you can show anyone else. So this one you can actually had time to show people. So notice in that video that we showed, the object actually appears to last in the sky for quite a while. This can be explained by the fact that space junk enters the Earth's atmosphere at a relatively slower speed, taking a long time to burn away and break apart. Our meteorologist Sarah Spivey put an amazing article together on KSAT.com explaining all of this. Remember, if you have any pictures or videos that captured this, to send them through KSAT Connect, and hopefully we can show them later in the morning. Mark, Steph. Hope to add to our collection of videos and pictures. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, thank you, Sarah. 509, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, big changes could be on the way for the latest Apple Watch. How the new one could look coming up. And after the break, the latest on President Biden's COVID infection, along with another top official in the Texas state government. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we're at 78 degrees for now. We're going to hit the triple digits again, but at least it's not, you know, like 110. We're hitting the low 100s now. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back. Just about 13 minutes past the hour. This morning, President Biden's doctor says he's improving after testing positive for COVID last week. And the president likely infected with the Omicron subvariant, a more infectious form of COVID that's causing cases to climb again nationwide. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest from Washington. This morning, President Biden's COVID symptoms improving, according to his doctor. Dr. Kevin O'Connor, the White House physician, sending this letter over the weekend, saying the president's cough and body aches have diminished, his oxygen levels are excellent, and lungs are clear. His main symptom now is a sore throat. The White House defending the decision not to put the president's physician on camera. We have a team of people who are involved. Uh, Dr. Connor and I are speaking multiple times a day. He's speaking to Dr. Fauci. Um, we are being very transparent, probably giving updates several times a day about how the president is doing. The White House releasing photos late last week showing the president working. Appearing virtually Friday, Biden's voice was noticeably raspy. Let me start by apologizing my voice. I'm feeling much better than I sound. Dr. Ashish Shah says the president is sick with the Omicron BA5 subvariant. BA5 is the most contagious form of COVID yet and can even reinfect people who had the virus a few months ago. The most recent CDC data showing BA5 makes up nearly 80% of new COVID infections in the U.S., causing another summer surge in cases. The thing we're concerned about is that hospitalizations are going up. People need to get vaccinated. The White House attributing the president's mild condition to the fact he's fully vaccinated and has received two booster shots. He's also continuing to take Paxlovid, the COVID treatment developed by Pfizer, most effective if taken soon after testing positive. President Biden is expected to continue working from the White House residence until he tests negative. The president will speak virtually to the National Association of Black Law Enforcement Executives today. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 514, about 78 degrees. And still to come, a new look for the Apple Watch. Why its new redesign could help you keep your information safer. Plus, as we head back to the office this Monday morning, Apple says they've got a new app for those who'd rather be hiking. Hold on, you're a night manager and mom? And the bill payer, baker, and nightlight maker? That's a lot. So adding and student might feel daunting. But what if a school could be there for all of you? Career, family, finances, and mental health. Happy birthday! Happy birthday buddy. Well, Happy it can. National University, supporting the whole you. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And for kids, try allergist recommended non drowsy children's Allegra. Ugh, stipated. Feeling weighed down by a backed up Ugh. gut. Miralax is different. It works naturally with the water in your body to unblock your gut. Free your gut, and your mood will follow. 518, we're learning more about what Apple reportedly has in the works for an upcoming Apple Watch. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a new look for the Apple Watch. Bloomberg reports the upcoming Apple Watch Pro will be the device's first redesign since the Series 4 was released four years ago. It's set to be a good bit bigger than the current model and will have a low power mode, which would extend battery life. And Apple's next software update will reportedly include a hide feature, allowing users to protect their most sensitive pictures. Once protected, pictures or albums can only be accessed with Face ID or a password. The hide feature is currently part of the iOS 16 beta. And finally, the Walk the Distance app is for those who'd rather be hiking. It lets you virtually walk some of the nation's longest pathways like the Appalachian and Pacific Crest Trails, and it's educational. Pictures and facts are provided as you reach certain landmarks. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. So you're virtually walking that? Uh, I, I think that was the gist of it. So is it like walking back and forth to your kitchen, but then it, you know. It looks like you're up on the Appalachian Trail somewhere. <laughs> okay, no problems on the roads right now. And if you're virtually driving, so <laughs> uh, you're not going to run into any issues anywhere. Here's a look at TransGuide 281 over there at uh, Grayson. Everything is moving along very well. Same thing, 35 New Braunfels, 90 at Couples, and uh, one more stop there, 35 at Maine. No problems whatsoever.
Now I shall sneak into this picture over here. So. Here, yeah. right there. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Thanks Again, for pulling double duty yes. today. Yes. yes. Thank you. And the question being, are you really tired of hundreds? Well, yes. that goes without saying. Let's check in with Ms. Positivity <laughs> here. Are you tired um, of the heat? Well, of course, just yeah. like everybody else. However, I have to say, like you said, on Sunday, it almost didn't feel as bad. We're, I'm getting used to the low hundreds at this well, point. And, and again, the reason for that in the afternoon, the humidity did drop down mm -hmm. fairly low. So we didn't have those heat index readings like we had last week where we had all the heat advisories and everything. So that is a little bit of uh, saving grace. Beautiful picture there, that uh, sunset. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Uh, got some clouds hanging around here. Been watching the moon. It's just a little sliver. It's the uh, waning crescent moon right now, and, but it's been kind of playing uh, peekaboo with the, the clouds, so we're not seeing it as of right now. 45 days as of yesterday. We're going to continue to add to this, and of course, we just continue to, uh, well, we're in third place and been there for a while, and we'll continue to approach or sneak up on however you want to put it 2011 as well as 2009 and at the rate we're going Friday we hit 50 so another seven days on top of that and it doesn't really appear as though there's going to be anything significant in behind that to prevent us from getting inching ever closer to number two as well as number one. 79 is the actual temperature right now. Same thing, Castorville as well as Canyon Lake. And then you factor in the humidity. And when you get these numbers again, 74, 75, that's fog up your glasses, wet towel, rainforest, however you want to describe it. It will definitely greet you when you step outside this morning. 82 is what it feels like 83 up the road at Canyon Lake and throughout the rest of the morning. We'll keep some of the stubborn clouds around, which yeah, it's nice and you kind of get that false sense. It's like, Ooh, are we going to have clouds around all day? No, it's not going to be the situation, unfortunately, and we are going to make it up to 90 at 11 o'clock, 92 at noon. By 1 o'clock, we're already just about at the normal average high temperature, which is now 96 degrees, and then uh, 100 at 3 o'clock. So once again, we're going to be in the triple digits for about uh, three, four hours or so from roughly 3 up until 6 or even after that. He forecast heat index, though, is not going to be just outrageous. Now, of course, we're going to have temperatures that are right around 105, and that's where it gets dangerous and your body does not cool itself that well down to the southwest, but we're not going to have those heat index readings just way over the top. And like I said, like we had last week. All right, here's the uh, water vapor imagery and see if you can guess where the high is right about there. And that's why you got that big clockwise rotation. Everything that's sitting on top of it's like putting a, a dome over the cake or something like that to keep the flies away. And that's what it's doing with all the clouds. And we just can't buy any rain around here. Perhaps by later on in the week, a little bit of a disturbance wants to move on in here, kind of away from the Gulf. But it's sort of a uh, sort of a crapshoot at best. 92 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 102, mostly sunny skies. So this will be day number 46. Like I said, we continue to rack up triple digits all the way through Friday. 10% chance for a couple of showers, basically along the coastal plain. Wednesday, Thursday, perhaps lingering Friday. If something decides to sneak in a little further to the west, great, but not a big. Big mm. rainmaker. Very yes. quick question: Are those consecutive days of uh, over 100? No, no, no. This is this is just the total the tally. The, going back the, into when we first did it back in May. Got it. So, okay. Because we broke this ring, we had 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. Broke it on the 15th, and so we've been counting ever since the 15th. So. Thank you for clarifying. Looking at multiple records to break in the future. Yeehaw. 524, <laughs> about 78 degrees. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. It is 526, and right now we are at 78 degrees. We've got the latest on what's happening on the ground in Ukraine, including what could happen with the country's grain supply that could help feed the global population. And over in Uvalde, parents are looking for answers on the future of Police Chief Pete Edondondo, why a meeting tonight might not give them what they're looking for. And if you've got back to school questions, we think we've got some answers. We'll tell you how you can find what you're looking for still ahead. And if you have an ahead on GMSA at 6, three people are dead this morning after a shooting at a university in the Philippines. We're going to have those details.
Good morning. Let's look outside with live cam. We're at 78 degrees, which is pretty mild compared to the warm afternoon we will have later today. Oh, is that the moon out there? Oh, no. Moon there at the very top of the screen, if you can see it. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, July 25th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, that's a great picture out there. I didn't see that until Mike pointed it out. And the clouds are kind of obscuring part of the moon this morning. Mike joins us now with more. Yeah, it's been kind of going back and forth. And uh, I don't know if that banner's in the way or not, but or the clouds yeah, is the banner in the way. So, um, but yeah, the uh, little sliver of a moon is the waning crescent moon. I mean, approaching the, the new moon's phase. Oh, there it is. It just popped back out right up there. Okay. That's Again, cool. it's kind of playing hide and seek this morning. Uh, we've got temperature right now, 79 degrees, dew point stands, 73, so plenty of humidity. That number really dropped off yesterday afternoon down in the low 60s, just about 60 at one point, and it wasn't too bad to be outside. I mean, we still got up to 101, and that combined with a couple of those clouds, it was actually tolerable to be outside uh, during the afternoon yesterday. 82 is what it feels like right now. Same thing, Castroville. 83 is the heat index up the road at Canyon Lake. Mold is on the, uh, the low side this morning, and throughout the rest of today, yep, we're going to do it again. 102 high temperature. Again, the heat index is not going to be outrageous, so if you're in the shade, should be okay. We'll be tolerable. Obviously, you want to take it easy, and uh, we're just going to continue to see those triple digit numbers throughout the rest of the week. Very, very small chance coming in here later on in the week. I'm talking a really small chance of rain, but at least there's something that uh, some folks may get a shower. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, we're not seeing any uh, problems around town as of right now. And we're looking at uh, some of the trans guide cameras there. And you can see 35 at Maine. Everything's moving along pretty smoothly. 10 at Vance Jackson, no problem there. 35 at Salado Creek, same thing. Just drive carefully this morning, folks. Thank you, Mike. Now to some late breaking news. San Antonio police looking for four people who now qu have quite a collection of sports cars, but they say they didn't get them the honest way. They stole them overnight from a north side business. Katrina Weber is live in the 2200 block of Lock Hill Selma with that story. And Katrina, have they had any luck in tracking them down? No, police even had their helicopter up for a while, but they were not able to find the vehicle, a U-Haul truck that those four uh, uh, criminals were in. Now, those people broke into this business here in the 2200 block of Lock Hill Selma. This is Sports Cards Plus. They went right through the front door. It's hard to tell now, but the glass is missing. They smashed the glass on the front door right there and went inside. Police say they were working very quickly. They could tell that from the surveillance cameras. They went in with trash bags in hand, filled up those bags, got what they wanted and got right back out into a U-Haul truck and then sped away. Uh, we had a chance to talk to the owner of this business. He says that it looks like they uh, knew exactly what to take. They took high-end items. They had boxes and boxes of sports cards, football and NBA cards that they took and uh, some other items as well. He told us it's not the kind of stuff that you could sell at a swap meet because it is just worth too much. He thinks that they may be planning to try to sell some of this on the internet. And so he is hoping that local authorities will sort of put out the word and he's putting out the word in the sports collectibles community that these items have been stolen. Uh, the owner also says that he intends to offer a reward for information because this is not the first time his business has been hit. He says he's owned the shop for about 30 years and this is the sixth time that someone has broken in, but it seems that this is the most uh, valuable, the most costly break in that he has had so far. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. The Valley School Board meeting tonight after canceling a special meeting Saturday to discuss the firing of School District Police Chief Pete Adedondo. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio of what we know about tonight's meeting and how local artists are helping the Valley community to heal. Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Steph. Now, the potential firing of District Police Chief Pete Aradondo isn't on the agenda of tonight's meeting. This after Superintendent Hal Harrell recommended the police chief's firing and calling for that special meeting on Saturday to do so, but ultimately it was postponed. Aradondo's lawyers asked the district to postpone the meeting amid due process concerns. The district announced Friday afternoon the district did not announce a new meeting date of that meeting. Aradondo remains on unpaid administrative leave. We will hopefully learn more about if and when that 
that would happen at the normally scheduled school board meeting tonight. But people say they want their voices heard over inaction from the school board. So across downtown Uvalde, murals are being painted to honor the 21 victims killed in the shooting. It's part of a project called Healing Uvalde 21 Portrait Murals. Artists from across the state have been paired with the victim based around a connection they share. Anna Hernandez is painting Maite Rodriguez, a 10 year old who's known by her green converse. Maite's mom shared her daughter was identified by her green converse shoes after being killed in her classroom. As Hernandez worked on the mural of Maite, she was able to see special moments between loved ones of other victims and the murals that have been completed. We came early yesterday and there was one of the one of the teacher's best friends was having coffee in front of the mural. The mural, the murals will be finished in the next couple of weeks and a dedication ceremony is in the works for August. There will also be a map made so people can easily find where each of those murals are in the city. Again, that meeting is happening tonight in Uvalde and we of course will have coverage there. So look for the latest on our latest newscast and on our website, kset.com. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Topping your morning headlines. U.S. officials are weighing whether to declare a monkeypox, whether to declare monkeypox, rather, a public health emergency. Infections worldwide are rising. More than 16,000 now confirmed in at least 75 countries, and more than 2,900 of those are here in the U.S. Here in Bear County, those are seven cases reported. ABC's Elwin Lopez has the latest. The Biden administration says the U.S. is considering whether to declare monkeypox a public health emergency. Right now we have over 2,000 cases, but we have ramped up vaccinations, ramped up treatments, ramped up testing, and we're going to continue to look at all sort of policy options. Such a declaration would allow the Health and Human Services Secretary greater freedom to allocate emergency resources. The World Health Organization already sounding the highest level of alert over the outbreak, now impacting at least 75 countries with more than 16,000 reported cases. The U.S. with 17 percent of those cases, 900 cases in New York state alone. I noticed that there are two lesions. The sores are very painful. The current outbreak primarily seen in men who identify as gay or bisexual, but anyone is at risk of exposure through close contact. The CDC warning that transmission can also occur through contaminated clothing and bedding. This is demand for vaccines in the U.S. soar, prompting officials to order 5 million more doses to add to the hundreds of thousands already going into the arms of anyone who wants one. Now, the disease is rarely fatal. One can typically recover without treatment. The symptoms, though, could take about a week or even two to show up, and they can include rashes and a fever. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Time now, 538 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, if you've got back to school questions, we've got answers how you can find what you're looking for. And a brand new episode of Case Explains airs today. What you can expect coming up after the break. Outside with live cam down to 78 degrees, pretty much standard for this time of year. As of late, it seems like weeks and weeks and weeks of temperatures hovering in the upper 70s in the early morning hours. What does the rest of your Monday look like? We'll talk to Mike coming up. And welcome back. It's 541. We want to help answer any questions you might have about vaccines. And that's why our KSET community partners are hosting a vaccine phone bank. This is on Wednesday from 5 to 7. Medical professionals from University Health will be answering all of your questions. We're going to have that phone number to call on Wednesday. And right down our website, we want to hear from you. What questions do you have about sending your kids back to class? It can be anything from school safety to staffing to COVID or anything else school related. Let us know on KSET.com. You can find this story right there on our homepage. Also a brand new episode of Case It Explains airs today and you're not going to want to miss it. Meteorologist Justin Horn and Sarah Spivey dive deep into a beautiful cave hidden in Comal County. They show the natural beauty of that area, but also what efforts are being made to protect it. After all, it is a vital piece of our water source in San Antonio. So make sure to tune in today on the news at 630 for Case It Explains the Honey Creek Cave. More new content on that story coming up 542 78 degrees and coming up next we have the latest on the ground in Ukraine, including how the country's food supply could be in jeopardy.
Taking it out to Ukraine, Russia insisting its strike on the key Black Sea port of Odessa hit only military targets, including a warship. President Zelensky saying that attack destroyed the very possibility of dialogue with the Kremlin, threatening the deal to end the Russian blockade. ABC's Patrick Rivell has more from Ukraine. Uncertainty still in Ukraine over when millions of tons of blockaded grain might begin to move. It's harvest time here in southern Ukraine. This farm near Odessa unable to ship their crops for months. This pile of grain is actually last year's harvest. There's about 250 tons of it. And normally it would already have been exported overseas. But because of Russia's blockade, it's just sitting here. The standstill driving up food prices and exacerbating a growing global hunger crisis. A UN brokered deal has opened a path to allow grain ships to start leaving again from Ukrainian ports. But less than 24 hours after signing, Russia struck Odessa's port with missiles. Ukrainian officials, though, say for now the deal continues. Farmer Vyacheslav Nevmozhitsky still skeptical the agreement will hold. Russia will only truly negotiate, he says, if Ukraine gives it a punch in the teeth. Ukraine is now trying to take the fight to Russia. In the south, signs growing of a possible Ukrainian counteroffensive aimed at retaking the occupied Kherson region. Ukraine this week striking the only three bridges Russia has to supply its forces in the region's capital. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky saying Saturday Ukrainian troops are pushing into the region step by step. That assessment echoed by Britain's Ministry of Defense, which claimed Russia's supply lines are increasingly at risk. And that was Patrick Grieval reporting. Some good light being shined in Ukraine. More than 200 people took part in a techno music party in a bombed out building in northern Ukraine yesterday. The revelers were both enjoying the music while cleaning and helping rebuild the area devastated by the Russian occupation only months previously. Ukraine's vibrant club scene was brought to an abrupt halt with the Russian invasion. A nighttime curfew is in effect in the capital of Kiev, forcing partygoers to find a way to combine the fun and freedom of the festival with rebuilding the country they love. Techno parties, especially rave festivals, uh, it, it was our lifestyle before. And uh, it, when, when we meet with friends uh, and uh, spend time, like uh, last summer, it was uh, every weekend uh, festivals here. So uh, in, in Ukraine, I mean, in uh, Kiev. So uh, we miss it and we want to come back to normal life. But uh, our normal life is uh, now is volunteering. Most of those volunteers, primarily in their 20s and 30s, came from Kiev, about two hours drive away. But others are from all over the world, including some Americans. The cleanup was the group's eighth event so far, and they already have helped repair 15 damaged homes in that village in northern Ukraine. In time now, it's 548, and at last check of those TransGuy cameras, things look okay so far. Mike Ostrich pulling double duty on this Monday, and you're doing pretty good at it, Mike. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey. <laughs> but we still got, you know, another hour and 10 minutes and we'll see what happens. Between OK, them. well, we anyway, have faith in uh, no problems are showing up on the map as of right now. A lot of uh, construction spots. So make sure if uh, if there's any construction workers on the roads there, you slow down because that is obviously the law. And looking at uh, some of the trans guide cameras. Yeah, like we were talking about, everything's moving along still very well. 10 over there at Vance Jackson, 35 at 410 and 410 over there at Broadway. No problem. So let's try and make it through the entire morning without any incidents. Everybody just behave and See how it yeah. goes. And of course, you'll be updating us on traffic throughout yep. the morning. Yes, indeed. And um, now this has become the fad, the yes. animals splooting. Splooting, yeah. yes. <laughs> Trying any way they can to stay cool. Like had, again, up until somebody posted a picture last week, had you heard the word spur splooting? I had never yes. heard that before. Not this much. <laughs> yes, I had. With squirrels and dogs and now But I, I know why this happened, though, because I mentioned dogs and squirrels do it mm -hmm. last week. And yeah, I accidentally right. omitted... Uh, cats, and I got in trouble with Moo Oh, in Hempstead. There you go. <laughs> cats bloot too. Yes, they cats. do. I love the sloth blanket too. Did you see that? Yeah, that's cute. Oh, I just noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like the cat, the look on the cat's face. Who me? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so let's say sloth sploot as well. Or, oh, we'll okay. Just include everybody. Leave everybody in it. Did you know they, that they can hang uh, from branches like that? And it's tendons, it's not muscles, so they, it, they can lock their hands around branches and just hang like that. Didn't know that. 
A little bit of sloth information for you on this Monday morning because uh, it is a slow Monday. Get it? Slow Monday? Yes. <laughs> sloth. Slow. <laughs> Be here the rest of the morning, folks, trying the veal. All right, uh, we've got some clouds hanging around here right now and 79 degrees, 76 Divine, 77 Pleasanton. Everybody is, well, here in San Antonio, we right now are four degrees above the normal average low temperature, which is 75. The average high right now is 96. And then, of course, we will top off uh, right around the on Saturday, Sunday, 97 degrees is going to be the average high temperature up through the 16th of August. So that's the hottest period of the year. Dew points are still fairly high. I mean, you get above 60 and you start to feel it. You get above 70. It is oppressive. we got some upper 60s in portions of the hill country and of course heat index. Now, the nice thing is that the humidity will be dropping down somewhat later on this afternoon. We'll keep some morning clouds around here. 80 at 8 o'clock, 90 then at 11 o'clock and by 3 o'clock we're going to move to 100 and then it will top off at 102 and of course the heat index won't be that much higher than that because the forecast is uh, for the dew points to drop off. They did drop off yesterday afternoon that combined with you know every once in a while the cloud and kind of move in front of the sun and it really helped out a little bit and so we'll have these dew points down there so we're not going to see uh, an extreme heat index. Now temperatures obviously are going to be just plain old hot down to the south end to the southwest but we don't have anything that's really hitting the heat advisory criteria that level two post a heat advisory. But of course, you just want to obviously take it easy if you're outside today once again. And this has been the case for what a couple of weeks now. At least there's nothing and going on in the tropics, although we're, things are going to start to ramp up, at least historically, as we start to move into August and then it peaks right around the, uh, the first week or so of September as far as the tropical season. 92 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature then makes it up to 102, mostly sunny skies. And then the next few days we are going to continue with triple digits again. We don't really see anything to bring about any sort of a change. If there happens to be one or two extra clouds, you know, just enough to block the sun in the late in the afternoon, maybe stay at 99, but, uh, and then there's that small chance for a stray shower too, primarily along the coastal plain Wednesday and Thursday, perhaps then even at Friday. If anything decides to come in a little bit further to the west, great, but looks like it's just gonna be down there to the, uh, the southeast, so. Hmm, oh, we'll keep yeah. our fingers crossed. About all we can do right now. Yes, thank you, Mike. 552, about 78 degrees. And after the break, there's a new movie on top of the box office. We're going to tell you about it after the break. Lottery numbers this morning pick three, 810, Fireball 9, your daily phone number 6555, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 5, 7, 12, 25, 28. Lotto Texas 6, 7, 14, 20, 26, 31. And your Powerball numbers 39. 41, 54, 59, 62, Powerball 12, Power Play 3. Go get your mega ticket today. Coming up here on GMA, we are here near Yosemite National Park because there is another fire over the weekend. You can see right behind me at least one of the 10 homes destroyed. There are several others that were hurt by it, and there are thousands at stake now. It's called the Oak Fire. It's burned at least 15,000 acres, and we've got nearly 4,000 folks waking up outside their homes. I'm going to be tracking this and, of course, the heat to the east, the severe storms to come. And we've got to talk about the growing concern over monkeypox. Now the World Health Organization has declared the outbreak a global health emergency. We're going to tell you what you need to know and so much more right here on Good Morning America. Top Gun Maverick flew down to fifth place. $10 million gave the long-awaited sequel a domestic total of $636 million. $10.3 million put Where the Crawdads Sing in fourth place in its second weekend in theaters. Minions The Rise of Gru slipped to third, but made $17.7 million for a domestic total of $298 million. God of Thunder, King Yashan! Thor Love and Thunder is up to $276 million domestic after a second place weekend worth $22 $2.1 million. Something about the clouds. That's big. How big? Big. Moviegoers said yes to Jordan Peele's latest twist-filled thriller, Nope. Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer star in the film, which debuted on top with $44 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Well, ahead in the next hour of GMSA this morning, a big meeting in Uvalde scheduled for tonight. What it can mean for Uvalde School Police Chief Pete Arredondo. And the very latest on this morning's late breaking news, San Antonio police looking for several suspects after a robbery at a sports collectible shop on the north side of town. We'll tell you everything we know about that. And checking Transky right now, you're looking live at I-10 and Callahan. Some traffic coming right at your screen right now. The morning commute underway. Mike Ostray is pulling double duty. He'll have more on your Monday forecast and your commute coming up after the break. The Valley School Board is set to meet tonight. We're going to tell you what it could mean for school police chief Pete Edadondo and his future. President Biden's doctor says the president's condition is improving. I'm Jay O'Brien in Washington. What's gotten better over the weekend for the president? Coming up. Are you ready for some pro football, San Antonio? The Rock is bringing pro football to the Alamo City with the newly formed XFL. We'll tell you about our new team just ahead. And the streak of triple digits will probably continue today. But for now, let's enjoy the 77 degrees. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hope you had an awesome weekend. Good morning to you. It is Monday, July 25th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead and get that extra cup of coffee, but let's do an iced coffee this morning because it's <laughs> going to be a hot one again. Only dropped down to 77 so far, and then we saw out there in that uh, live cam shot, Mike Ostrich, the sun is just now starting to make its very first glimmer uh, on the horizon. Yep, and uh, still got some clouds hanging around here, and we'll keep some of the morning clouds around. You know, it was nice yesterday afternoon when a few of those, yes. we were outside, and uh, the humidity wasn't bad yeah but I can literally hear my yard baking I mean like you know how you <laughs> put a yeah <laughs> yes. you know, something in the oven and you leave it in there maybe a little too long what yard yeah exactly. that's what I have yeah. to say so yeah. unfortunately now we do have a very small chance for a couple of showers but not for a few days and again it's almost one of those situations where it's not even worth mentioning but there's some of the uh, the breaks in the clouds right now and we've got temperatures heat index it feels like 81 80 Canyon Lake 79 at Pleasanton and we do have a low amount of mold in the atmosphere of course the updated counts going to be coming out in about an hour hour and a half or so so temperatures will stay pretty steady throughout the rest of the morning with those clouds out there as well as the higher humidity this morning helps to keep those numbers up. We're about to three, four degrees above the normal low temperature. We're going to make it up into the low 90s today at noon and then we top off at 10 to that noontime temperature and we will finish up at 102 today. So today, today is going to be day number 46 as far as triple digit temperatures and we're going to keep racking them up there. Like I said, a very small chance for a couple of showers by the middle part of the week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Check it out the roads right now. Traffic authority. And as you can see on some of these uh, trans guide cameras around town, everything appears to be moving along very well over there. 10 at Callahan, 90 at Nogalitos, as well as 90 at 35. And just checking the map right now, we do have some construction spots around there, but um, Knock on wood, no accidents are showing up as of right now. We're going to keep keep on top of things throughout the rest of the morning. Thank you, Mike. Right now, we are staying on top of late breaking news as thousands of dollars worth of collectibles are now in the hands of criminals. They stole them from a north side business overnight in the 2200 block of Lock Hill, Selma. Katrina Weber is there with a live report for us this morning. Uh, Katrina, you mentioned earlier there may be a reward for information about this crime. Well, that's right. I had a chance to speak to the owner of the business, and he says he is ready to put up money uh, as a reward for information about this break and the sixth one he's had in the 30 years that he has owned this place. But this one definitely the most costly for him. Uh, the criminals, according to police, there were four of them. They got right in by breaking through the front glass door of Sports Cards Plus, and then they got inside and had their way. We have some video to show you from a little bit earlier this morning. The call came in just after to four o'clock this morning. Police got here within minutes, but still too late to catch those criminals who had already ran off. Uh, the, they say, according to police, the, there were four people dressed all in black. They got inside. They had trash bags with them, which they then filled with merchandise. Now, the owner tells us that uh, they were boxes of collectible cards, mostly football and NBA cards, as well as some other high-end expensive collectibles, according to him, worth thousands. Even the boxes of cards were worth thousands of dollars. The criminals got away. According to police, they drove off in a U-Haul truck. 
And so they have been going through the business, looking for evidence. They've also been watching surveillance video to learn more about this crime. The owner here also still taking inventory, but he says so far he's already up to thousands of dollars worth of loss here this morning. And he is willing to put up money, he says, to try to find out who's responsible for this. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We go now to Uvalde, where the school board there is set to meet tonight after canceling a special meeting on Saturday to discuss firing school district police chief Pete Edadondo. The school district released a statement in part saying the meeting the consider the termination of chief Chief Ardondo will be held at a later date, which is yet to be determined. So far, the potential firing of Ardondo is not on the agenda, but people want their voices heard over inaction from the school board. We will have a crew at the meeting and we'll bring you the very latest right here on air and online at KSET.com. Meanwhile, the community of Uvalde continues to remember those 19 students and two teachers who senselessly lost their lives that horrible day. Across downtown Uvalde, murals are being painted to honor the victims killed inside Robb Elementary two months ago. It's a project that involves artists from across Texas who have been paired with a victim based around a connection they share. We're going to tell you more about the artists and the project coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. Well, back here in San Antonio, the desperate need for blood continues. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center reports a great need for type O blood. Right now, they have less than a day's supply left. Because of that low supply, some surgeries have now been postponed. You can help by donating at a community blood drive. There's one today at Santicos West Lakes on Loop 410. It starts at 10 a.m. and goes through 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick will be working from home this week. This after announcing he tested positive for COVID-19 this weekend. And according to his office, Patrick is experiencing mild symptoms. He is also isolating at his home and following all safety protocols. Patrick is fully vaccinated and got his booster shot last fall. This isn't his first bout with COVID. Patrick previously tested positive about eight months ago. His office says he will work from home the rest of the week. And now to Washington, where this morning President Biden's doctor says the president is improving after testing positive for COVID last week. Now, according to the White House, the president still has a sore throat, but his cough has diminished and his breathing remains normal. The president likely infected with the Omicron BA5 subvariant, a more infectious form of the virus causing COVID cases to climb again nationwide. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more. This morning, President Biden's COVID symptoms improving, according to his doctor. Dr. Kevin O'Connor, the White House physician, sending this letter over the weekend, saying the president's cough and body aches have diminished, his oxygen levels are excellent, and lungs are clear. His main symptom now is a sore throat. The White House defending the decision not to put the president's physician on camera. We have a team of people who are involved. Uh, Dr. Connor and I are speaking multiple times a day. He's speaking to Dr. Fauci. Um, we are being very transparent, probably giving updates several times a day about how the president's doing. The White House releasing photos late last week showing the president working. Appearing virtually Friday, Biden's voice was noticeably raspy. Let me start by apologizing my voice. I'm feeling much better than I sound. Dr. Ashish Shah says the president is sick with the Omicron BA5 subvariant. BA5 is the most contagious form of COVID yet and can even reinfect people who had the virus a few months ago. The most recent CDC data showing BA5 makes up nearly 80% of new COVID infections in the U.S., causing another summer surge in cases. The thing we're concerned about is that hospitalizations are going up. People need to get vaccinated. The White House attributing the president's mild condition to the fact he's fully vaccinated and has received two booster shots. He's also continuing to take Paxlovid, the COVID treatment developed by Pfizer, most effective if taken soon after testing positive. President Biden is expected to continue working from the White House residence until he tests negative. The president will speak virtually to the National Association of Black Law Enforcement Executives today. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It's still pretty early, so I'm not going to do this full force. But this morning, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? <laughs> well, movie star and former WWE superstar Dwayne The Rock Johnson is bringing pro football back to San Antonio with the newly formed XFL. Sarah Costa joins us live to break down what we know about the new league and our new team, which is a great story to wake up to this morning. It is, you know, and um, 
I, I always get hesitant because you know how many leagues have we had here a bunch. in San Antonio. But hopefully this one will stick because it has some big names behind it, like Johnson purchasing, who purchased this league from WWE's former chairman, Vince McMahon. The Rock says he wanted to add markets like San Antonio to the mix. The head coach will be former Steelers wide receiver and Super Bowl champion, Heinz Ward. So this is the Alamo City's first pro football team since the short-lived time of the Commanders that went 5-3 in 2019 before the Alliance of American Football went bankrupt in April of 2019. The twice-failed XFL League is returned under new ownership in August of 2020, Johnson and his business partner and ex-wife Danny Garcia and Redbird Capital Partners purchased the XFL for $15 million. And with a new investor and a new vision, <laughs> the XFL will take another run at attracting spring football fans. Mayor Ron Nirenberg is hopeful about this league bringing a new team to San Antonio. And I can tell you in, in the time leading up to the announcement, there's a lot of excitement, not only from uh, San Antonio in terms of uh, having professional football back in our city, uh, but also from the league. The league recognizes, as I do, as I think the whole sports kingdom does, that San Antonio is primed and ready to step up and increase its profile of professional athletics. And, and this is another example and a small step again, uh, a significant step but one step indeed towards uh, us having a larger share of the professional sports world. So the XFL plans to kick off on February 18th of next year. That's less than a week after the Super Bowl. Taking a look at other cities in this league, Texas is well represented. The teams here, Houston, and in Arlington, there's also teams in St. Louis, Seattle, Washington, D.C., Las Vegas, and Orlando. Now, the league signed a five-year TV deal with Disney, so each season's 43 games will be aired and streamed across ABC, ESPN, and FX. Mark and Steph? Exciting stuff. We still haven't heard a team name, though. That still I'm sure remains to be seen. Hope, I mean, it can't be the Commanders. No. It can't. That's now Washington. <laughs> so Yeah, something we'll, else. We'll see. Hopefully that's coming soon. Yeah, we'll vote on it. Chupacabras. The Thank Chupacabras. You. Thank that you. would be nice. Sarah. I like that. 611 right now. Gas prices falling again. National average for a gallon of regular down to 454 a gallon, according to the Lundberg survey. That's 32 cents lower than the last two weeks, but still $1.32 higher than the same time last year. Average price of diesel down 22 cents over two weeks' time. The new Walk the Distance app is for those who would rather be hiking, so it lets you virtually walk some of the nation's longest pathways, like the Appalachian and the Pacific Crest Trails, and its educational pictures and facts are provided as you reach certain landmarks. Right now, it's uh, 612, 77 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA, including the massive wildfires burning on the West Coast. We're going to have the latest after the break. Just had the very latest on monkeypox in the U.S. We'll tell you where most of the cases are popping up. And a quick look outside with a live cam. We're at a mild 77 degrees right now, looking pretty interesting out there with the clouds. We'll be right back. 6.15, some other top stories are following for you this morning. Pope Francis on a week-long journey in Canada. It's the first papal visit there in 20 years. On Sunday, he spent time in Edmonton, where he apologized to indigenous peoples for church abuses committed in schools. The move was seen as an act of healing. Future stops include mass in Edmonton and Quebec. The CDC confirmed two cases of monkeypox in children this weekend, and now the number of cases in the U.S. approaching 3,000. So far, the state with the most cases is New York with 900, and that is followed by California with 356. Texas has over 100 cases statewide with a handful in San Antonio. A fast-moving wildfire continues to gain momentum in California, now burning more than 14,000 acres. It's estimated the fire is 0% contained. Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency for Mariposa County, allowing the state to put in additional resources there. More than 3,000 people have been forced to evacuate their homes near Yosemite National Park. Firefighters battling to save Yosemite's giant sequoia trees, along with 2,000 buildings that are threatened by the blaze. Time now, 617. Let's go ahead and look at those trans guide cameras. Clear, I didn't see too many problems out there. Here's Highway 90 at I-35 and I-35 at Maine, where things are moving so far. I'm popping a bunch of them up there for you, so. Thank you. Yeah, you are. They're looking good so far. a whole little slew there, so.
All right, now let me run back over here. <laughs> it's a big studio when you have to go from one end to the other. Yes, just well, a you guys are on the so. opposite ends of the studio there. Okay, ready and Ta -da. you, Michael. Take your shot, your so. Yeah, thanks. Double Yay. duty. Wear both hats today. <laughs> So, all right, uh, outside right now, we, as you can see, we've got a little bit a uh, little bit more in the way of some clearing out there with some of those early morning clouds. Temperature stands at 78 degrees, 79 in Cthulhu. We're three above the normal low as of right now, and that top number dew point still stays at uh, 73, which means there's a bunch of humidity out there. We'll definitely greet you when you uh, step outside and oh, darn it all. Let me do this real quickly. I've got a really cool looking picture here for you. And of course, the Wi Fi in here. Come on, please. Uh... Okay, here it comes. There. Yay. Okay, that was the space junk. Oh, I was on camera the whole time doing that. That was the space junk. <laughs> Attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Pardon me for turning my back on you like that. Uh, the space junk that a lot of folks saw last night. Saracosa is going to talk more about that in uh, in just a minute. But very cool, uh, cool sight out there. And uh, yeah, not really that unusual. All right, here's uh, what it looks like as far as the hurricane season is concerned. Usually peaks right around September the 10th, which is uh, three months into the hurricane season because it starts obviously June 1st, goes up until the end of November. So it would make sense that it peaks right in the middle of that. And as of right now, still there's nothing going on. And this has been for about the past couple of weeks. Nothing out there. Hurricane Center is not raising an eyebrow at anything as of right now. Heat index here in town is at 81 degrees. Feels like 82 at Castroville and Canyon Lake feels like 80. We keep a couple of clouds around this morning, obviously, and then a lot more sunshine today. It's going to be blazing sun, so it's going to get us up to just about the normal high temperature, which is 96 right now at uh, 1 o'clock and then 102 to finish things up later on this afternoon and not a drop of rain in sight. Here's the high, which is sitting just about right on top of us, and that's what has been in place and is covering most all of the country as of right now. And so that's why a lot of folks are feeling all this heat out there. Now, what we're hoping for, and it seems like every week I say this, what we're hoping for down the road, what we're hoping for down the road, but uh, we've got these little waves coming in here as this sort of shifts to the north just a bit. These easterly waves, we'll call them, coming in here by Wednesday, Thursday, and that hopefully will give us a shot at some rain by mm, maybe about late Wednesday, Thursday, perhaps leaning into Friday, but most of that's going to be uh, down along the coastal plain if anything does happen to pop up. 92 degrees today at noon and then 102 for a high temperature today. Then we go over the next few days. We're going to continue to chalk up. These are the number of days we've hit triple digits so far this year. Uh, 45 as of yesterday, but we'll just continue to add to that. We're going to hit 50 by Friday. Of course, second place is 57 degrees, 57 degrees, 57 days, 59 is first place. And if the rate things are going, it's going to be into the uh, first week of August. And second week of August when we hit one and two, and I don't think there's anything to really uh, change that at all. There's that small chance for a couple of showers popping up here by maybe Wednesday and going into Thursday. Okay, is this thing just not going to work for me today? Let me go back to this picture right now. Sarah? My computers are just having lots of fun. There we go. I had this. <laughs> that one, that one. Like you did it. <laughs> Please take it away, Sarah. <laughs> okay. So I am no expert at any of this, but our meteorologist, Sarah Spivey, believes that what you're seeing on your screen, I love this shot, yeah. by the way, above the Alamo there. Um, it's not a meter, but space debris, but it was definitely a sight to see. So go ahead and just take a look at this video. It's awesome. This happened shortly after 10 p.m. last night. Folks around South Central Texas began to notice a boom and a large streak of light leaving a trail across the night sky before fizzling off with a sparkling finish. Now it's an educated guess, but the light show was most likely space junk falling into Earth's atmosphere. Space debris or junk is a collection of man-made objects that exist in low Earth orbit. This consists of discontinued satellites, discarded rocket stages, and other objects that collide and break off 
in space. Now, according to NOAA, 200 to 400 pieces of space junk fall back into Earth's atmosphere each year. That's nearly one per day on average. Meteors travel millions of miles before they actually get to Earth, gaining tremendous speed. And unless the meteor is unusually very large, it will move quickly across the sky and it usually disappears before you can even show anyone else. So notice that in this video that we're showing, the object appears to last in the sky for quite a while. So this can be explained by the fact that space junk enters the Earth's atmosphere at a relatively slower speed, taking a long time to burn away and break apart. Our Sarah Spivey put an excellent art article together on KSAT.com explaining how all of this works. Remember, if you have any pictures or videos, if you caught this on camera last night, make sure to send them through KSAT Connect. Mark and Steph? It was a big enough deal that this is, of course, was seen far and wide. It's one of the top stories in Houston this morning yeah. wow. as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. 623, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, are you a fan of Selena? Well, you'll soon be able to hear her voice again on a new single. We're going to explain right after the break. And trending now on KSET.com, you'll soon be able to hear Selena's voice again. Her family is releasing a single from the Star's posthumous album on Friday. Como Te Quiera Yo A Ti is the first single to be released from the album Moonchild Mixes. The single will feature a 13-track song retrospective, and you can pre-save the song on Spotify. 626, about 77 degrees. And coming up on GMSA at 630, we're going to have more on the recent inflation and its impact on parents as they get their kids ready to return to class. We're going to have some tips that can help you save. This morning, lots of questions after a robbery at a Northside Sports Collectible Shop. Details just ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam. Let's hope those clouds stick around to give us a little bit of relief a little bit longer. Right now, we're at 77 degrees. Good morning to you. It's Monday, the 25th of July. Happy Monday. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and hope you had a chance to avoid the heat. Although yesterday, you know, not too bad. Mike said it was a low humidity in the afternoon. Barely above 100 degrees. Right? Barely, yes, 101, but um, yeah, we did have a couple of clouds in the afternoon and the humidity again was not just ridiculous. Like, you know, because last week we had that higher humidity sticking around in the afternoons and that's what had prompted those heat advisories last week, those excessive heat warnings, nothing like that right now. We do have some of these clouds hanging around here this morning. They're going to be uh, continuing to clear on out and 78 degrees. So we have dropped down one notch in the past couple of hours. Dew point still remains very high at 73, which means there's a lot of moisture out there this morning. A lot of humidity is going to greet you when you step outside. Heat index 81 at the airport, 82 Castroville, mid 70s pretty much elsewhere. And mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated uh, count is going to be coming out in just a little bit here. And then throughout the next uh, few days, we will continue to rack up triple digit temperatures. And as far as rain, maybe something by midweek. We'll talk more about that. I wouldn't get really excited about it, but we'll talk more about it in just a couple of minutes. If you're getting ready to hit the roads, traffic around town, everything has been moving along very well so far. Air 35 at New Braunfels, 1604 at Pat Booker, as well as 35 at Randolph. And just a quick check of the map. There is plenty of construction, and it looks like right here there may be a bit of a uh, slowdown on 90 coming into town, but that's uh, right before, just after uh, 151, just east of 151. So hopefully that doesn't uh, grow in anything bigger than that. We're going to keep checking traffic throughout the rest of the morning. Looks like one of the access points to the base, Mike Osterhage. Thank you very much, though. San Antonio, please try to track down a group of criminals who appear to be into collectibles. They broke into a Northside business overnight and stole thousands of dollars worth of collectible football and basketball cards. Katrina Weber is live in the 2200 block of Lock Hill Selma near Northwest Military. And Katrina, you mentioned the crooks also left behind quite a mess. Well, they sure did. For starters, the glass from the front door, that was shattered and just left here inside and outside of the business. They also went through uh, the actual business and took items 
taking things off the shelves. Let me give you a look at the video from a little bit earlier this morning. This break-in happened just after 4 o'clock this morning. San Antonio police arrived very quickly, but not quickly enough to catch the people who broke into this business, sports clubs, sports carts plus. Uh, police say that uh, they did see surveillance video showing four people dressed all in black going into the business with trash bags in their hands and then taking items from the shelves, shoving them into those bags and getting out. They got into a U-Haul truck and then drove away. The owner told us that he is still taking inventory, but from what he can see, they did take boxes full of those collectible cards, mostly football and NBA cards, as well as some other high-end collectibles. Now, the owner says that that stuff is worth thousands of dollars. It's not the kind of uh, thing that you would see on sale at a flea market. It's something more that uh, he expects they will be trying to sell on the Internet because of the high value of the items that were taken. And that owner says that he is prepared to offer a reward of thousands of dollars to try to find out who is behind this break-in. He says he's owned this business for 30 years, and this has happened several times before, but it seems that this is the most costly for him. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you so much. 633, the Valley School Board meeting tonight after canceling a special meeting Saturday to discuss firing School District Police Chief Pete Adedondo. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio. What we know about tonight's meeting and how local artists are helping the Uvalde community to heal. Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Now, the potential firing of District Police Chief Pete Aradondo isn't on the agenda of tonight's meeting. This after Superintendent Hal Harrell recommended the police chief's firing and calling for that special meeting on Saturday to do so, but was ultimately postponed. Aradondo's lawyer asked the district to postpone the meeting amid due process concerns the district announced on Friday afternoon. The district did not announce a new meeting date. Arredondo remains on unpaid administrative leave. We will hopefully learn more about if and when that would happen at the normally scheduled school board meeting tonight. But people say they want their voices heard over inaction from the school board. Now across downtown Uvalde, murals are being painted to honor the 21 victims killed in the shooting. It's part of a project called Healing Uvalde 21 Portrait Murals. Artists from across Texas have been paired with the victim based around a connection they share. Anna Hernandez is painting Maite Rodriguez, a 10-year-old who's known by her green converse. Maite's mom shared her daughter was identified by those shoes after being killed in her classroom. As Hernandez worked on the mural of Maite, she was able to see special moments between loved ones of other victims and the mur murals that have been completed. We came early yesterday and there was one of the one of the teacher's best friends was having coffee in front of the mural. So the murals will be finished in the next couple of weeks and a dedication ceremony is in the works for August. There will also be a map made so people can easily find where each of those murals are located. Again, that meeting is happening tonight in Uvalde. And of course, we will be there. Look for the latest in our later newscast and on KSAT.com. Mark and Steph. Thanks, Sarah. This morning, we have new details on an Amber Alert issued to phones overnight and across the state. The Las Vegas County Sheriff's Office is searching for three abducted children. Authorities are looking for three-year-old Kristen Robertson, four-year-old Christine Robertson, and six-year-old Christopher Robertson II. They are also looking for 35-year-old Amber Whitehead. She is described as five foot seven tall, weighing 165 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Authorities say she is driving a white 2000 Toyota Tundra with Texas license plate number GJZ8544. You're asked to contact the Lamp Passes County Sheriff's Office or call 911 if you see the kids or the suspect. Two people were killed and at least five others injured after gunfire erupted Sunday at a Los Angeles park where a car show was being held. LAPD says it happened at Peck Park in L.A.'s San Pedro neighborhood. So far, police have not identified the victims. Seven people overall, four men and three women, were injured and taken to hospitals. The Los Angeles police have not offered a motive and no arrests have been made. At least three people were killed in a shooting at a university campus in the Philippines on Sunday. According to officials, a gunman opened fire ahead of a graduation ceremony. The suspect was taken in police custody. His victims include a former mayor, her assistant, and a campus security guard. 
Season three of South Texas Crime Stories returns tomorrow. This upcoming season, the podcast will explore five new crimes that include a murder for hire plot, the case of a San Antonio serial killer, and the murder of a teen from Bandera County. In fact, the first story is that murder. Bridget Townsend disappeared in 2001, but it would be a couple of years before anybody knew what actually happened to her. Eric Hernandez and Lee Wallman tell us more about it and how the man who was convicted of the crime, Ramiro Gonzalez, has had his execution delayed six times. You can listen to the episode on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. A brand new episode of Case Ad Explains airs tonight. You don't want to miss it. Meteorologists Justin Horn and Sarah Spivey dive deep into a beautiful cave in Comal County. They show the natural beauty of that area, but also what efforts are being made to protect it. After all, it is a vital piece of our water resources here in San Antonio. Make sure to tune in tonight on the news at 630 for Case Ad Explains for more on the Honey Creek Cave. And turning to the coronavirus now, the number of positive cases in Bear County has decreased slightly, but remains in the high category. Metro Health is reporting over 1,000 new cases as of Friday. Zero new deaths to report. Meanwhile, 327 people across the country are hospitalized with COVID. 51 are in the ICU, 17 are on ventilators, and these numbers will be updated later today at 4.30. We want to help answer any questions you might have about vaccines. That's why our KSAT community partners are hosting a vaccine phone bank this week. It's Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Medical professionals from University Health will be answering all your questions. We'll have the phone number to call on Wednesday itself. Time now, 638 and 77 degrees for now. New survey finds families are prioritizing back to school and college spending as inflation continues to rise. Up next, I look at some cost saving tips for you and your family. Yes, the president and CEO of Visit San Antonio joined us live on Leading SA. We talked a lot, but we really talked about navigating through the pandemic over the last two years. We talked about setting a new record for the coaching convention here in the Alamo City and how that's a really good indication for the future of tourism and hospitality here. And we talked about one major challenge that we are still facing. Take a listen to our conversation. The economy is um, tough right now for um, everyone in Texas and the United States, but I will tell you, I've been traveling a lot lately. I um, was in four different cities in the past uh, 10 days, and our airports are busy. Our airport in San Antonio is busy, so people are really traveling. I also think, um, you know, looking at a positive note, um, you know, the revenge travel that, that may um, – Many people in the United States were looking forward to this summer. I also think a lot of people are staying local. So we're seeing a lot of our local audience come um, stay downtown in San Antonio, enjoy our museums and our restaurants and our parks um, and invest in their own city. We also talked about the future of the San Antonio airport and what this two and a half billion dollar expansion means for our community. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. And of course, we have leading essay every Sunday morning, 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. And time now, 643. School districts in some parts of the country are already getting ready to welcome back students in just a few weeks. And for parents, that means back to school shopping amid historic inflation and recession fears. Yeah, according to the National Retail Federation, spending is expected to match last year's record high of $37 billion. Max Massey's back and has some tips to save parents from breaking the bank to get their kids ready for back to school. Scissors you have and glue. Have Back glue. to school shopping season is now underway and parents, well, they're facing higher prices for just about everything on the list. All of this happening amid looming recession fears and inflation reaching a 41 year high. That's food prices, that's rent. And that's back to school uh, supplies. So everything's up a lot and it's really biting into the purchasing power of uh, the typical family. Meanwhile, a new National Retail Federation survey found one third of consumers say they're spending less in other areas so that they can pay for items their children need for the start of school. Financial expert Julie Alma Tavares says it's good that parents are prioritizing items for school and has these three tips to save some money. The first step, make a budget and stick to it. Next, take it slow. Some parents are making the mistake of buying too much before school starts 
only to find out their kids don't actually need all the materials. Don't worry about having a back to school haul. Don't worry about spending hundreds of dollars on clothes and hundreds of dollars of school supplies. Have a good understanding of what the needs are going to be for that semester or for that year and take it slowly. Also, involve the kids. Tavares recommends giving them a set amount and letting them shop with you. That way, it's a money lesson for them as well, forcing them to prioritize what they really need. Don't go too crazy with the stickers and the binders and all of those extra things because a really important part of financial power and also teaching generational wealth is having these conversations. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And right now on our website, we want to hear from you. What questions you have about sending your kids back to school? It can be about anything from school safety to staffing to COVID or anything else school related. Just let us know on KSAT.com. You can find this story right there on our homepage. And we're going to go ahead and check your trans guide cameras for you. It's OK, but now we're looking at I-10 and Callahan East where things are moving. Uh, they're also moving there at Loop 410 at Callahan Road and I-35 at Main and Highway 90. Medio Creek doesn't look like a whole lot of problems there, just a lot of people on the road there. Highway 90, I-35 also moving. We saw some stacking over there near one of the uh, main entrances to JBSA Lackland a little bit earlier, but that's not altogether surprising early on a Monday morning. Mike is back with another <laughs> adorable case of splooting. Aww. I think we've seen a picture of Yvonne's dog in the past. It is a Golden Pyrenees. Golden Retriever and Great Pyrenees. That is just a gargantuan baby, basically. <laughs> and look at that little one lying on the, the cold concrete floor trying to keep cool there. Oh, pretty cute. I know, adorable. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. All right, some of our morning clouds are hanging around here, and um, it'd be nice if they stuck around all day long. That's not going to be the situation. Once again, we are up to 45 days so far this year that we have had uh, triple digit temperatures, obviously in third place. And at the rate we're going, we're going to be hitting 50 by Friday, and then it doesn't look like there's anything to change that going into then the uh, last couple of days of July and the first few days of August. So we're going to be uh, knocking at this door by looks like uh, next week and then not too long after that. And of course, as far as consecutive days, we had 14 going there in a row and then we did not hit 100 back on the 15th, but we have hit 100 every day since then. So today is going to be up to uh, day number 10 and we'll continue to chalk those up as well. The consecutive days, 80 one right now is what it feels like out there at the airport 80 in Canyon Lake and 70s elsewhere. We'll keep morning clouds around, obviously, and then make it into the mid to upper 80s by late morning. A lot more sunshine, 92 at noon. Normal high temperature right now is 96, so we're pretty much going to be there just after noon and then make it up to 102 later on this afternoon. We hit 101 yesterday. Of course, we had some of those clouds and we did have some relatively drier air in the afternoon and that's going to be the situation today. So these dew points which are up there this morning, but they will drop down kind of the usual cycle that we go through, but it should be low enough to where it's not going to be too just ridiculously uncomfortable to be outside should be okay 102 so not much of an actual heat index to deal with. Obviously air temperature is going to be much higher down there to the uh, southwest. So you no matter what the situation is, you might want to take it easy. All right, as far as uh, what's going to be going on in the next couple of days, nothing today, nothing really tomorrow. Wednesday, a few showers here along the coastal plain. And again, long range model, this tends to kind of, you know, use a broad brush to paint this in, but we're getting a little bit of a wave trying to come in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to be the situation on Thursday as well. So just one or two of those uh, scattered showers out there, primarily along the coastal plain. Something decides to move in a little further to the west. Great, but wouldn't count on anything really 92 at noon today partly cloudy skies high temperature makes it up to 102 mostly sunny skies and like i said we'll continue to rack up triple digits all the way through friday into the weekend and that small chance for a couple of showers by wednesday thursday most of those are primarily going to be off to the east so today would be 10 in a row 11, 12, 13, 14. So by Friday again, we will tie the 
last streak of triple digit days. That's right. And, and I think it's bears worth mentioning again, those numbers are not consecutive 100s. Those are days over 100 for the, the year. entire year. Going back to when we first hit it about middle of May or so. But right. yeah, like I said, by Friday, we'll be at 14 in a row and continue from there. So no mas. It's still a lot. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank yeah. you very much, Mike. Right now, 650, about 77 degrees. In this super competitive housing market, it might make more sense to do home renovations instead of looking for a new one. Well, tomorrow on GMSA, how to set yourself up for a successful home renovation. And we'd like to think that you've set yourself up for success by starting your day with us here on GMSA outside looking at those morning clouds. We'll wrap up the morning show after this. Stainless steamer cleans your whole home. All you gotta do is pick up the phone. It's not just carpet anymore. It's tile, wood, stone, really any floor. Call 1-800-STEAMER now. We'll clean your home and you'll say, wow. Look good, feel good. In the latest gear, from your favorite brands. More style, more savings. Coles. I've been telling everyone, the secret to great teeth is having healthy gums. Keep yours healthy with Crest Advanced Gum Restore. It's clinically proven to detoxify below the gum line. And it restores by helping heal gums in as little as seven days. Because you can't have a healthy smile without healthy gums. Advanced Gum Restore from Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Coming up here on GMA, we are here near Yosemite National Park because there is another fire over the weekend. You can see right behind me at least one of the 10 homes destroyed. There are several others that were hurt by it, and there are thousands at stake now. It's called the Oak Fire. It's burned at least 15,000 acres, and we've got nearly 4,000 folks waking up outside their homes. I'm going to be tracking this and, of course, the heat to the east, the severe storms to come. And we've got to talk about the growing concern over monkeypox. Now the World Health Organization has declared the outbreak a global health emergency. We're going to tell you what you need to know and so much more right here on Good Morning America. I hate to jinx it, but so far so good this morning. Everything is uh, moving along very well. 410 over there at Callahan. We just saw 1604 over by uh, Pat Booker, 90 at 35 and uh, 90 there at Medio Creek. No problems. Traffic's picking up somewhat, but uh, again, knock on wood that everything's moving along fairly well. And we do have some of our clouds left over hanging around here this morning. 78 degrees right now. Same thing up the road at Canyon Lake. Still some humidity around here and then that will be dropping down somewhat by later on this afternoon. So slightly more comfortable. Maybe a shower or two Wednesday, Thursday, primarily off to the east. Otherwise, we just keep racking up the triple digits. Well, I'll still keep my fingers crossed for Wednesday, Thursday. You never know. True. <laughs> don't count on it though. Aww. The look on your face. <laughs> That's okay. I know you don't want to disappoint us, Mike. No. It's okay. It's okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at nine.